Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 116. Today I'm going to talk about Village. Uh, this is a game that won the Kenner Spiel de Zars for 2012, the award. I think deservedly so. So, probably turn off the review now. <laughs> um, so, I've had a chance to play this over the last uh, couple of months. Uh, a buddy of mine got it, and then I picked it up myself. They're from Tasty Minstrel, who just released it. And I've had the opportunity to play it with two groups, you know, sort of my gamer group and then my folks, my family. And uh, so I'm just going to review a little bit here because there's already some good walkthrough videos, uh, specifically uh, Ryan Metzler, The Dice Tower. It's a good one. Uh, go watch that if you haven't already. And I will go into sort of a walkthrough, kind of one of those deals where I walk through it a little bit, but kind of tell you some sort of strategic kind of, you know, analysis of the thing. Uh, so... Anyway, uh, so the game works well with uh, the gamers. Uh, I think everybody mostly likes it, uh, for the most part. And with the family, I had one relative, who shall remain nameless, uh, who uh, basically hates the game uh, because it's very sort of counterintuitive to your traditional sort of everyday Euro, uh, which is a, a mark uh, not against the game. I don't think that's one of the best things about it. But uh, so they don't want to play it anymore. Uh, I don't think. I, mean, I might bring it back out on him uh, a little bit later. Uh, but the other relative uh, loves it, and I love it. Uh, so I think this is one of those deals where it's like, okay, what is the Kenner Spiel about? Uh, you know, they have the um, the regular Spiel de Zars, which Kingdom Builder won in this year. And that's supposed to, be, supposed to be like an easier type of game, a gateway game, if you will. And the Kenner Spiel, like, what does that actually mean? You know, is that really heavy, super heavy game like Dominant Species? Probably not. Uh, last year it was Seven Wonders, um, which uh, that's a very hard game to classify. Uh, but anyway, this one I think is probably, you know, I think it hits the mark. Because if this is kind of a next step game, it's not something that's super heavy. It's only played 60 to 90 minutes, and that's accurate. Um, so I think this is probably the kind of thing that we'll see in the future if there's a good year of these kind of things. Uh, this has some extra little layers of depth you know above and beyond the gateway game and i'll you know i'll go over that when i go over the walkthrough so i think it's deservedly uh, won the award and deserved to win it uh so let me just get into exactly why and show you a little bit more of the components and how it plays and everything like that okay i got the board set up here for a four player game and i should say that i really only like this game with three or four players uh two players is okay i mean it works but it's just not as good as a three and four player game there's just not a lot of very much tension. Uh, you're gonna be taking cubes off the board here. Uh, so it's just it, not quite as tight, it, but it works fine. I think people will enjoy it as a two player game. I wouldn't refuse to play it as a two player game, but this having played it three and four, uh, it's just much better that way. So the first thing you're gonna do to start the game is seed the board in these little circle areas with cubes. So the game comes with these little cards here and tells you how to do that based on the number of players. So for four players, you've got this one, two players, it does it like this, and then three players here. So what you do is you fill up this green bag here with cubes, and there's a whole bunch of cubes in the game. And you take this number of pink cubes, brown cubes, green cubes, orange cubes, and then all of the black cubes that are available and stick them in the bag. And then you draw out this many and put them in each of the spots. So you do four here at the little uh, marriage chapel and then three here at the city hall and etc. So basically all of these different spots here are the actions that you can take on the turn. So if you wanted to go and do the action here which is sort of the craft area which you actually have a few options to take when you do that you'll just take a cube from that area and then you can take the action related to that building. Or if you wanted to take the action related to the church here you take a cube and then you can execute the church action. So in front of them, players are going to have this sort of player board here. You're going to start the game off with four workers. And you've got the ones on here, and these are sort of your first generation. That's why there's the one. Now off to the side, you're going to have other workers with twos, and then threes and fours. And these are going to be sort of the children of that first generation there. You're also going to have a disc here that goes around the time track. And so anytime you take an action that uses up time, you're going to have to move this along this track. And then anytime it passes this bridge here, you have to kill off one of your oldest generation, whatever your oldest happens to be. And these workers may be out here on the board, they may still be in here in your little farm. So if the lowest number you have is a one, you've got to kill off a one. Once all your ones are killed off, if you have any twos out and then you pass this bridge, you've got to kill off a two, etc. So here is also um, a place to store grain. You're going to get grain in the game. You can store up to five grain. And there's also an action associated 
uh, with the farm itself that you actually will take on the board here. You take a cube and you can do the farm action and then this has little icons to tell you what to do and I'll explain that in a second. So let me just quickly run through each of the different actions that you can possibly select on your turn. Okay, the first action that you're going to be doing uh, probably early on in the game mostly, as well as later in the game, is this area here, sort of the craft area. So you'll take a cube, like I said, and this cube goes on your board. This is where you're going to store all the different cubes. And then you're going to take one of these sort of craft actions. Now the cubes that you take, let me say this first off, are going to be important probably for later turns, but also you can use them on the turn that you just took it. So if I took this pink cube and I needed it to build a wagon, you can see that needs a pink or an orange, or pink and an orange, you could take it and then use it right away. And that goes for any of these here. So you need to keep in mind which cubes you're going to take and you know what you're going to be doing on later turns. It may be taking cubes here to prevent other people from taking them because all of this is open information. So you can take a cube preventing. You go, Billy's going to need this green cube, so I'm going to take that. Maybe that's the last one. The other thing to keep in mind is these black cubes may come out. And these are kind of bad, but not 100% always bad. Now, whenever you take one of these black cubes, you're going to move your disc two spaces. It's going to use up two time. And these kind of represent disease, you know, like a plague or some kind of sickness. But, and I'll get into this a little bit more in detail, sometimes you want to sort of time the deaths of your workers in, you know, to make it the most efficient time for them to die. As backwards as that sounds, it's sort of a gamey little aspect of the game and that makes it really, really kind of wonky and, and maybe backwards for some people. I mean, I quite enjoy it because it adds sort of that extra layer to what's going on. So there are some times where you might want to take this black cube and actually trigger a death. And, and then I'll explain why in a minute, but just keep that in mind. So if I take this, I have a couple of options. I can basically choose one of these buildings and then pay the cost to get some sort of uh, resource or item or build something. So in this case of the wagon, I may want to use this wagon here and then generate this wagon. I'll use this for traveling later and I'll explain what these are used for in a minute. But if I wanted to get this, I can either pay a pink or an orange and just turn the cubes in and discard them and I get the item or I can train up a worker here. Now if you can see here, there's two little you know, hourglasses there. Next is the worker. And then there's two more hourglasses. So how does this, what does this mean? So what that means is I can take a worker from off of my farm, it's gotta come off my farm, and I put that there. And that's gonna cost me two time to put the worker there the first time I put the worker there. So I gotta move my disc twice on there. And then I'm gonna spend two more time to generate the wagon. So it's gonna be a total of four time the first time I do this. Now on another turn, let's say I come back in here and take another cube. I've already got a worker in there. I don't have to retrain him again. So I just have to pay the little hourglass thing in the bubble here. So it's only going to cost me two time to generate another wagon. And all of these spaces pretty much work exactly like that. So you can see here, let me move this down. You can train a worker here for two time and then pay two time and get a uh, piece of paper here, these little parchments. Or you can just pay a pink cube. And even if you have a guy in there, you can pay a pink cube if you don't feel like spending the time. Next here is to basically train up a, either a horse or an ox. And this costs you three time to train a guy, three time again to build the thing or grow the thing. Or you can just pay three grain. And then up here you've got the plow here, which you can either train a worker or you can pay the orange and the pink. And then this one here, there's no worker spot. You can see that's X'd out there. So you can pay two grain and two time, and then you get two of these coins. Now everybody starts off with one of these coins, and these are worth a point at the end of the game, but they can also act as a wild resource. So in this case, if I didn't want to pay the time or train the worker for the wagon, and I only had a pink cube, I could turn in a pink cube plus a coin to replace that, and then I can get whatever I needed there. So that's sort of the workman area there. Okay, so while we're in here, let's talk about death real quick. So let's say I had this guy working in one of these buildings here. And then I would had my little disc go around the bridge, and then so I'd have to kill off a worker. Let's say I want to choose to kill off a worker that's in here. Now, if you look on the board here, you can see these little symbols here, these sort of shields or crests, and they're different colors. So in the workman area, they've got these yellow ones. And then here in the church, we've got a brown one. And here on the farm, we have a purple one. What that means is that when you kill off a worker, when he dies naturally, I keep saying kill off, but it's... You're not actively killing the guy. It's not like murder here. So he's just naturally dying through the progression of time. Uh, so when he dies off, you're going to take a look at where he's at. So if he was here, you're going to look at that symbol there. Or if he was on your farm, you're going to look at the, uh, you know, the purple symbol. And then you're going to look over to this sort of book of uh, history of the town or the village. And you're going to find the matching shield. So 
If he was in the workman area over here, you'll want to put this worker in here like so. And uh, these numbers here are basically the number of players. So in a three player and four player game, then you use all the threes. And then you know, if you're playing a two player game, you don't use any of this stuff. So what's going to happen is this uh, is going to book is going to fill up here. So the next guy that dies in the workman area where this yellow shield is, he's going to go here, and then the third guy will go there. Well, if that area is filled up, so if a guy dies and he, and the, you know, the the player chooses to kill him off, quote unquote, in this area, there's no room for him to go in this spot here. So any uh, <laughs> excess workers are going to go to this sort of nondescript graveyard, and so you'll put the guy in here. And then again, in a three and four player game, you're gonna use these graves. In a two player game, you'll just use these. So there are two ways that the game will actually end. If this graveyard fills up, or if this book fills up, then the game will end. And whoever triggered the game end, that's their last turn. And then everybody else gets one more action and then we'll do some end of game scoring. So the thing I wanted to sort of divert from the, you know, the different description of the actions here is you need to sort of plan out and keep in mind where people are gonna die. Because let's be honest, all of these ones are going to die. Now, I think I had one game uh, where one of my ones did not die because people were pushing the end of the game right from the beginning. And uh, But most of the time, all your ones are going to die. Probably your two's going to die. And if they're not dying, you're probably doing something wrong because you're, you can see here you're going to score bonus points at the end of the game. So if you have three workers in here, you get four points. Whereas if you have five, you get 12. So it's sort of an area majority kind of thing here. And this is sort of the annals of the history of the village. You know, all of the well-known people are going to go into here. So putting these people out and working them for a little while, but then getting rid of them in a way, is actually sort of a key sort of aspect of the game. So just jumping around the board here, here's the next area. You can see this has a green shield. So if you want to take this action, you'll pull a cube like before. And then you're going to want to travel. So you're going to take a worker from off your farm, and then he can travel one of two paths here to start the game. So to travel, you've got to pay a certain amount. So you can see you've got to pay two time, a wagon, and two pink to travel from your area to here. Or you've got to pay two time, a wagon, or two, and two brown to go to here. And you're actually going to use up the wagon. So you've got to, you've got to have a wagon and then spend it. And you move your guy here, and then you put one of your discs on whatever spot you land on. And you immediately take that reward. So you actually can see, as you travel, you're going to fill up this area with discs. And then at the end of the game here, however many discs you have is the uh, amount of bonus points at the end of the game. So you're going to want to try, if you're going to take this strategy, it's a huge sort of payout at the end of the game. Next thing you might do is take a cube here, and this is the city hall. You can see it's got the red shield. Uh, and then you'll put a worker in here. Now, in addition to taking the cube, you're going to have to pay a little bit. You're going to have to pay one time, and then either a piece of paper or the two green cubes and to get this guy in the first uh, sort of level here on City Hall. Now the first level you can take this uh, ring and you keep that until the end of the round and that means you're going to go first next round and then you'll put it back here uh, at the end of the round. And then again you can take it on a later turn, move them up for two time and then a paper and two green and then you can take uh, two cubes of your choice. Next one is you can take one of these uh, tokens of your choice whether it's uh, you know plows or horses or whatever and then uh, finally up here uh, you can pay a coin and just get three points. Now keep in mind, this guy's a one, right? So he's probably going to die. Well, this area has a little end of game bonus. So at the end of the game, if you've got a guy all the way up here, he's going to get you six points. But that is not necessarily going to be the case if he's a, you know, a generation one guy. He's probably going to die. So, but that's okay because you want to get a guy in the book of life, or not the book of life, but the book of knowledge or whatever the heck it's called, uh, down here. So you want to get a guy in there. So it's not totally, you know, dumb to get a guy in there. You're not going to get your end of game points, but you're going to be able to get a guy in this book down here. Now, right next door to City Hall, we have sort of this wedding chapel idea. So if you take this, then you can either add a new worker to your board, and you take whatever the lowest available worker from your supplies and put it on your farm. Or you can pull a worker off the board and then put it back onto your farm. Next we have the farm action here in the center of the board. You take a cube and then you basically execute this action. Now for this action to be legal, you need at least one worker sitting on there. It doesn't have, matter if you have more than one, you just need at least one. If you've got one worker on there, you can take two grain. If you've got a worker, a plow, and a horse, you can take three grain. You don't use up the plow and horse, you just need to have them in your possession. And then finally, if you have a plow and an ox, you get to take four grain. But you always need a worker on there. And then you maybe get two, or you get a little bit more, depending if you have these other tokens. 
So that's the farm action. Next we have the market action. You can see there's only one cube in here. So this is only going to happen once per round. Uh, most of the time. So if I take a cube then I'm going to execute this. And now we can see here we've got some of these off the side. And then we've got these that are sort of in play at these different customers here. And there'll be a stack of these face down off the side of the board. And then as these sort of get bought up, then these are going to shift up and then we'll fill in these here. So what you can do very simply is trade in whatever it says here. And then you get this token here. So if I trade in a wagon, I get three points. I put that face down and then I'll add these up at the end of the game. And these just are different variety of things. So you can see grain. This is one of the reasons you get grain and trade grain in. A lot of these things are like grain and something else, like a grain and an ox. And so you'll buy these out and say, I bought these. Well, well, here, let's say I bought one. And then now everybody else, even though I'm the one that took the action, has a chance to participate. Now going around the table, they can pay a green cube at a time to then take pl uh, participate in that uh, market. So if I bought that one, maybe my buddy to the left of me pays a green at a time, buys this. And the next person maybe passes, next person pays a green at a time, buys this one, now it's back to me. Now I can actually go in again, I've still got to pay a green at a time to get the second time for me. And then let's say everybody just passes and then these all shift up like that. And then, you know, we'll deal out some new ones here in this space. Finally, we have the church action here. So if you take this, you take a cube from here and you can take the church action. You can see it's got the uh, little brown symbol there. Now what you're going to do with the church action is you're going to pay a brown cube, or three times and be able to put one of your workers from your farm into this black bag. So in this black bag we're going to have some of these monks here and these go in here. So at the end of the round, let's say I've got you know one guy in there, I took this on the blue player and I put him in there. Now why would I want to put him in here? That doesn't make any sense. He's in there, he's in this black bag. Now at the end of the round, whoever the current start player is, is going to draw four people out of this bag. But starting with the start player, he has the choice if he wants to pay a coin and then go in here and fish out uh, you know one of his guys or if you wanted to he could pay four coin and fish out however whatever four he wanted to fish out okay but if nobody pays a coin let's say nobody pays a coin the, the first player has the first option and then go around the table everybody's got an option to pay some coin to grab the guys out then we're gonna randomly draw them out we're only gonna draw four oh, there we go we drew four so if we hadn't have drawn this blue guy he would have stayed in the bag and then nothing would have happened but let's say we did draw him, or we drew some other colors. He's going to go in the church here at this level here, at the starting level. So, at the end of the game, he's going to get however many points, however far along he goes in the church, kind of like the city hall. So what you can do after you draw everybody out of uh, the bag, is let's say we had some other guys in here. So we had this red guy in here, and he's already up here. Now everybody has a chance that has a person in the church, after we've drawn people out of the bag for that round, to pay a certain amount of grain to move your guy up. So I could pay one grain, or maybe three grain, one plus two, to move him up a little bit further. And the red player could play four grain here to move him up to this uh, you know, far end spot. And then again, at the end of the game, if you ever have guys here, you get that many points. So it's even feasible that I could have two guys here and you know get eight points at the end of the game. Now, at the end of the round, there's one little bit of scoring. Whoever has the most guys here, gets two points, but if it's tied, then whoever's furthest up gets two points. So that's a fair bit of sort of end of the game type of thing where you get a lot of these guys in here, try to push them up with some grain and get some, you know, nice amount of points here. Because if you got like a guy here, here, and here, that's 13 points. That's relatively the same uh, as having a few of the discs out uh, where you travel. But again, it's not totally uh, backwards to get a guy that is of generation one here because you want the guy to die because he's in this brown symbol to so show up in this book. So this three spaces here. So it's not totally stupid to have a guy, you know, that's not going to score you any end of game points in there. He is going to pass on and then his annals will be written in this journal, let's say. So that's pretty much the game. You're just going to take turns pulling cubes, taking actions. Once all the cubes are gone, the round's over. We'll reseed the board. We'll check the church. We'll draw from the bag, get any points from there. And then we'll just keep going and going and going until either the book or the graveyard is filled up. Basically the key to the game, in some sense, is generating these little cardboard guys to either get tons of grain from your farm. So you, remember you get extra grain if you have the ox and the, the plow. Getting the wagons to do a bunch of traveling, making sure you've got the right cubes to take the right different routes. You're gonna use grain here in the church. You're gonna use the paper here to go up to city hall. You can use all the stuff to sell to the market. 
And you've also got to make sure that people die in sort of a graceful fashion and go into this book to get these points at the end of the game. So there's a lot of sort of little avenues you can pursue here, and maybe you want to pursue two of them really well. Like I've done really well doing, you know, getting like all my discs out and selling a bunch of stuff. So basically getting wagons and going here and then selling all the other stuff off for junk for end of the game scoring there. But I've seen people do well as well, just doing the market here and also getting a bunch of points at the church. Also getting big points here. Now everybody's usually going to get some points out of this book. Um, but, you know, there's a sort of a nice increment here. If you only got three in there, it's only four points versus 12 if you've got five in there. So there's a quite a difference there. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the overview. Well, one thing I did mention that was on the board there is you can actually turn in three of the same color cubes. So if I had three orange cubes, I could just discard those and then choose any action on the board, even if the cubes are gone from that action. So remember the market, you have uh, only one cube in there, so only one person can trigger that whole market phase. Well, if I turn in three orange cubes of all the same, then I can trigger another phase because that market actually refills uh, as soon as that you know phase is over, it doesn't refill at the end of the round. So you can trigger in another uh, another market, or you can do whatever. So you can travel, uh, you know, on the little roads because there's only two cubes there as well. So it's expensive. You know, that's three whole cubes that you could be using to spend on other things, but it's there for you. So I think you can tell I like this game. It's won the big award for the year. I think deservedly so again. Uh, but it has some of those sort of slight deviations from your traditional euros which is a breath of fresh air for me um, but I think maybe we'll take some folks you know a player to to kind of get into some people may not like it obviously it's a board game people like it people don't like it um, but I think it, it suits sort of a nice uh, nice balance between sort of a nice strategic game uh, but also uh, you know being light enough that you can play it with family members and things like that uh, so yeah I think I've explained everything okay so anyway, yeah, take a look at it. I don't know where the heck you're going to get it. They keep selling out of this thing. So hopefully they print a whole bunch more this year or next year and people can really enjoy it. It's, it's, it's a very refreshing game. I mean, honestly, there's not really a game that I've seen quite like this one at all. And it also, one of the things about it is it's got so many end of game scorings. You've got the traveling, you've got the market, you've got the church, uh, you've got the book, you know, at the end, the book of life or whatever I keep calling the thing. So that's really cool. You've got a lot of different avenues to approach, but it's not like I, I can pick and just beat down one path and win. You've got to still be nimble. It's not like I can just you know burn and exploit one thing. And the randomized cubes kind of keeps that fresh and everything. So anyway, it's really well put together. And the, the components and the art and the board is everything is great. So all around, it's just you know really 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 nice game. Thanks.